Welcome back. I'm the IntensiveMD, a double board certified intensivist, here to give you an inside look into the intensive care unit. Today, we're gonna to talk about oxygen delivery devices. This video was requested by somebody in the comments section. So of course, if you have any suggestions for videos, leave them below, I might do them. So when we talk about oxygen devices, we're gonna talk about the flow, which is liters per minute, and the concentration, which is the percentage of oxygen in the gas. So when somebody is in hypoxic respiratory failure or they have low levels of oxygen, we start them on supplemental oxygen. So these oxygens come in different flavors. They're used for different things. I'm gonna start at the lowest one, low flow nasal cannula. This is usually one to six liters. If you're thinking of somebody who uses oxygen at home, has the tank or has some you know device that they take around with them, that's usually a low flow nasal cannula and it can go up to six liters. In the hospital, we have it coming from the wall supply of oxygen. After that, there's the face mask, which is about 15 liters flow. And this can be used in scenario, sometimes they'll just put a face mask on somebody if they're starting to feel short of breath or if somebody's a mouth breather, sometimes they do better with um, a face mask but it's usually more temporary. There is something that many hospitals have that we call the green cannula. Oximizer are similar so they are thicker cannulas, larger bore cannulas and they can go up to 15 liters. They're not technically high flow but they are a higher flow than the low flow one to six liters. So we'll use this as somebody starting to need more than you know six liters or so of oxygen but doesn't look like they're going to need too much more past that if so if someone's going to need eight or nine liters we'll start this device in an acute situation where somebody's starting to feel short of breath and you'll see this maybe ems bringing somebody in or in the ed or on the floor if somebody's starting to feel short of breath all of a sudden they'll put on a what's called a non-rebreather so this is a mask that delivers oxygen and it also has a bag attached to it with a, a valve. So that prevents the patient from breathing back in the carbon dioxide that they're breathing out. So that's why it's called a non-rebreather. And that usually goes up to 15 liters as well. So, so far, a lot of the devices we've talked about, the lower flow cannulas, the kind of intermediate flows, oximizers, green cannulas, and face masks can usually stay on the floor. If it looks like they're going a different direction, they might go to a step down unit. If they're on a non rebreather, we start getting concerned because that's usually something more acute, but we'll go look at the patient and see if they need either one of these next devices I'm gonna talk about. So next is the high flow ca nasal cannula. I posted about this on my Instagram a couple weeks ago, but it is a device that has liters flow and it goes up to 60 liters. And the concentration of oxygen, which is the percentage, goes from 21%, which is the concentration of oxygen in room air or the air that we're all breathing up to 100%. So the most amount of oxygen this can give someone is 60 liters, 100%. If somebody's on the lower range of the high flow oxygen requirement, we'll have them in our step down unit and monitor them. But if they're on the higher range of high flow, then we'll move them to the intensive care unit because this is a sign this patient may need to go on a ventilator. And then we have two types of devices that are non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. So these, if you remember from my prior video about the ventilator, I talked briefly about lung physiology and the alveoli is where the oxygen goes in and communicates with the blood vessel so oxygen can be exchanged for carbon dioxide. So the positive pressure helps boost these open. There is BiPAP or bi-level. There are multiple settings on this, but for simplicity, there is an IPAP and EPAP. So IPAP is inspiratory pressure and EPAP is expiratory pressure. And the difference between those pressures also assists with ventilation or carbon dioxide elimination. We will use BiPAP in settings where somebody may be having a COPD exacerbation or any other type of hypercapnic respiratory failure. So that's respiratory failure where the carbon dioxide levels are high. Then there's CPAP. So this is a continuous pressure. So we only set 
one pressure, the EPAP, and that's given continuously. This does not help with carbon dioxide elimination, so it is best for types of hypoxic respiratory failure or low oxygen respiratory failures. And you may recognize CPAP if you know anybody who has sleep apnea. So the high flow nasal cannula and BiPAP are two things that we use a lot in the intensive care unit to try to avoid intubation if we think that we can bridge someone and turn them around without having to proceed with the ventilator. These are usually our go-to devices. And like I said, the high flow nasal cannula can help if somebody just needs more oxygen and the BiPAP can help if somebody needs oxygen and a little bit of ventilation too. Of course, there are instances where we need to go ahead and proceed with intubation and place somebody on a ventilator, but I'm not gonna go into ventilators because I already did a two-part series about these, so if you are curious about ventilators, I'm gonna post some links above and you can go check those videos out. And one bonus thing I'm gonna talk about is Heliox. So Heliox is a combination of helium and oxygen. Since the helium particles are much smaller than oxygen, they can travel further into the further parts of the lung. This is used very rarely. I think I've only seen it used once, but we, some people use it in severe asthma or if there's any type of upper airway obstruction, just because instead of having turbulent flow, this will help create what we call laminar flow or a straight line. So Heliox is also an option in some situations, but it's very rarely used. I haven't used it in my own independent practice, and I think I've seen it used once during residency. If you have any questions about these devices or, again, any requests for videos, you can leave them below. If you found this interesting, share it with a friend, and I will be back on Friday for another fun video.